lesson for today is all about Samuel and Ark. It is a short story, Samuel and Ark. He thought for a moment about how angry his mother would be with him for coming back alone and late from school. But then he shooed the thought away from his mind. He wanted to enjoy the beauty of the woods and not think of anything else. A yellow big miner hopped around him, pecking busily at the ground. He thought he'd practice speaking to the miner. So he cleared his throat and said very slowly and softly, My name is Samuel. He heard his own voice so seldom that it always sounded strange to him. He continued, I live in the village. My house was my house as well. He wasn't really thinking. He was just saying anything that came to his mind. My brother flies a kite, but not very well. Suddenly, he heard a sharp, small voice. Yes, yes, I know all about you. Stop introducing yourself. Samuel shut up and looked around him. He narrowed his eyes and looked through the trees, but there was no one around. Samuel was worried now. He had heard about ghosts hiding about these woods. He picked up his bag and was about to dash off. When the same sharp small voice called out, Wait! I want to talk to you! Where are you? Samuel asked quickly. Here! Down here! Samuel looked down around him and saw the mina lolling in the dust on its back, holding a thin twig in its mouth. Well, well, a talking mina! Samuel was delighted. He immediately thought of scooping it up and taking it home and keeping it in a nice cage. Oh no, I know what you're thinking. You're not going to keep me in a cage. I'm a bird. The trees are my home. The sky is my road. I'm not going to be made a prisoner in some tight little cage. Samuel was amazed. He heard about talking parrots and minas before the, but they never spoke more than a few sentences to them by their masters. This mina was really special. Listen, my name is Ark. I can help you if you help me. Samuel thought about this. How would Ark, the mina, help him and how could he help Ark? Yes, yes, I know what you're thinking. How can this silly little bird help me? I'll tell you how. My friend, you are shy, right? Samuel nodded, even more amazed now. Okay, so here's what we can do for each other. If you keep talking to me, you'll stop being shy. That's how I'll help you. You, in turn, will get your father and his neighbors to stop chopping down the trees in this part of the woods. If they chop, chop down all these trees, we'll lose our homes, and, and then I won't be Ark any longer. It sounded like a good idea to Samuel. The plan was for Samuel to make Ark every day in the woods for the next one week. During that time, Samuel would talk to Ark and try to rid himself of his shyness. Samuel walked back home thinking all the while about this remarkable bird. His mother was at the door of their house, waiting with a broom in her hand. Samuel knew that he would be spanked with a broom, but it didn't matter much to him. He was too excited to worry about brooms. The next afternoon, Samuel found his way to the same cluster of trees as planned. Sure enough, Ark was there. This time he was resting on his side, his head on his wings, and he was humming a song. He really was a funny little bird and Samuel couldn't help but laugh. What is it? Never heard a bird sing before. No, Samuel answered, still laughing. I haven't. Look, isn't this super? You just talk to me. 
Mark clapped his wings together. So their conversation started from that day onwards. Soon, Samuel realized that Ark was doing all the listening while Samuel was doing all the talking. Samuel was thrilled. It was dream come true. Now, he too, he too would be like his brother, and he too would have friends. At long last, he would not be called shy baby. The week was coming to an end. At home, Samuel's parents had noticed the change in him, and they were thrilled to see their younger son talking to visitors and chatting with the neighbor's children. They wondered how this tremendous change had come but did not ask Samuel. On the last day, Ark asked Samuel whether he had spoken to his father about chopping down trees. Samuel promised he would. He, de he then thanked Ark who shook his ring the way people shake hands. As Samuel was turning to go, Art said, Remember friend, if you don't keep your promise, you'll, you will become shy again. Samuel turned home, wondering how he would get his father to stop chopping down the trees. He knew that talking to his father wouldn't make any difference. If he told his family that a miner had requested them to stop the felling of the trees, they would just think him crazy. Late that, late that night, Samuel went to the shed at the back of his house and picked up the axe his, of his father used to chop woods. He then jumped the wall and took the axe from the neighbor's house. He collected all the axes from the houses and took them to a field where he buried them. The next morning, there was chaos in the village. All the axes were gone. Everyone asked, everyone asked ev every else if they had seen a thief. No one could solve the mystery. One of the elders of the village st stood up. He said, It's the spirit of the forest. She doesn't want to kill her trees any longer. The creature of the forest suffer when they lose their homes. Don't cut another tree or else you might anger her. The village folk agreed and said the old gentleman was right. They would not cut down any more trees. Samuel was happy. He had kept his promise. Ark would remain free and Samuel would never be shy again. That night after dinner, Samuel heard a sharp little cackle outside the door. He stepped out and saw Ark. So Samuel, we're going to be friends forever, you know? That's how it works. You kept your promise and I kept mine. If you ever need me again, you know where to find me. Yes Ark, thanks again. You'll always be my friend. From inside the house, Samuel's mother called out, Samuel, who are you talking to? Nobody ma, he called back. It doesn't matter. You can talk to the birds just as long as you talk, Samuel. Yes ma, I'll talk to the birds, Samuel replied and Ark winked back at Samuel. Now here's the question in this selection. Understanding the selection. Number one, where was Samuel? Number two, why was surprised to see the miner? Three, what was the agreement between the two? Number four, how did Samuel fulfill his promise? And number five, what did the villagers think? Now, let's go now to Enriching your vocabulary of vocabulary words. Determine the synonym of the underlined words in each sentence. Choose from the words in the box. So, in the sentence you are go, you are 
you are going to identify the underlined words, the synonyms. Then, find the meaning of the words in the box. Okay, number one. So, we have here the words annoyed, anxiously, gradually, loveliness, overjoyed, softly, captive, startled, unusual, and odd. So, here's the... Here's your choices. So, number one, Samuel thought his mother would be angry. So, the underlined word here is angry. Number two, he wanted to enjoy the beauty of the wood. The underlined word here is beauty. Number three, the mina was pecking busily at the ground. The underlined word is busily. Number four. Samuel cleared his throat and talked slowly to the bird. The underlined word here is slowly. Number five. His own voice sounded strange to him. So the underlined word here in this sentence is strange. Next. Number six. Samuel asked a question weekly. W E A K L Y. Weekly. The underlined word here is weekly. Seven. He was delighted to hear the minus speak. The underlined word here is delighted. Number 8. The mina said it did not want to be a prisoner in a cage. So the underlined word here is prisoner. Prisoner. Then number 9. Samuel was amazed. Okay, amazed. Now the underlined word here is amazed. And number 10. The mina was really special. The underlined word here is special. So here's the story. So that's all. So the story about the Samuel and art.